With the sheet. All right, that's yeah. enough. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on. Let's uh, round you guys back up again. Hey, hey, Libby, thank you for being. Thank you. Libby. <laughs> <laughs> she does it with a smile, too, with a big smile okay. as well. So, um, are we up and, and running? At this yes. Point? So, welcome to King of Glory Church <laughs> in southeastern Virginia. We're running just a little bit late today. We had some technical difficulties, but it's great to have you with us today. Welcome. I'm Pastor Larry. That's the King of Glory Church. Church, say hi. Hi. We say hi to you. May the Lord bless your time with us today. Um, let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the great blessing that you give us in Christ Jesus. Be with us now as we come together in this place, and we pray, Lord, that your word would come to us, that you would shower us once again, Lord, with your love and your grace. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Peace be with you. Awesome. We offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. together celebrating our new life in Christ Jesus. And yet, as we gather, we know that we are sinners and in need of repentance and forgiveness. God's word says to us that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we, we confess, confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins 
and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And as we draw near to the Lord, let us consider our sins and ask our gracious Lord for his forgiveness once again. moment of silence, we are confident in God's grace, and let us confess our sin to God, our loving Father. Most Most merciful God, God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by by what we have done, done, and by by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Hear the good news for you today. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son, Jesus, to die for us. And for his sake, he forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I announce to you once again that our sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. God. We sing to our amazing God.
though you knew it wasn't the right thing to do? I'm, I'm at, right now? No, I'm not asking about right now. Well, right now. <laughs> 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 and, and, but has that ever happened to you where you did something even though you knew you weren't supposed to? Emily scrunched you down. <laughs> I think I, I have a feeling. I have a feeling you do. How about the rest of us? Have we ever done something even though we knew we weren't supposed to? Yeah, you're not alone, guys. Every, we all do it. Absolutely. And, and when we do stuff that we want to do, even though we know it's not the right thing to do, that's called being selfish. Has, has Bob or Dad ever call, <coughs> called you told you you were being selfish? Or maybe your sister? Have they ever said to you, Bryce or Emily, you're being selfish? Yes. He says back there. Yep. Well, this is, what, this is what the Bible verse today says. In Philippians 2, verse 3, it says, Do nothing from selfish ambition, because, you're, you're, because you want to be selfish, or conceit. Being conceited means you think you're better than everybody else. But in humility, count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of us, let, let each of us, or each of you, look not only to his own interests, but also the interests of others. Huh. So, I think scripture is telling us here, guys, that we, we've got to, instead of being self, you know, thinking only about ourselves, we're going to think about others instead. So, right, instead of thinking about you, you might think about Emily and Julia and Libby and Bobby and Dad. And, and Emily, instead of just thinking about yourself, you think about Bryce and Julia and, and Libby and Bob and Dad and your friends. Is that easy to do? Yeah. It is? <laughs> I need to talk to you about how you do that. <laughs> sure, sure you do. Because you know it's not easy to do. We have our own self-interest all the time, right? We, we think about ourselves and we do what we want to do. Whether anybody else wants us to do it or not, we do what we want to do much of the time. But scripture tells today tells us not to be that way. To think of others first. Would they love, would, is, is what we're going to do helpful to them? Is what we're going to do kind to them? Is what we're going to do friendly? Is what we're going to do going to hurt them? Hurt somebody else? And so that's the question to ask yourself this week. What I want to do, is it is it being about me, all about me? Or am I thinking of others first? Am I thinking of the rest of my family first? Or my friends first? Or my whoever else I'm in, I'm probably contact with? Am I thinking of them first? When I'm going to do this? Or am I thinking about just myself? And we know what the Lord wants us to do by reading this. He wants us to think of others first. And then about ourselves. So that's your challenge. You know, you most, most Sundays I give you a challenge. That's the challenge. Put others in front, be first, right? And not yourself. Uh, have a blessed day. We can think with our first reading today. David Patrick. Thank you, David. <coughs> Today's first lesson comes from Ezekiel. Uh, the word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, declares the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the father, as well as the soul of the son, is mine. The soul who sins shall die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is not just. Hear now. O house of Israel, is my way not just? Is it not your ways that are not just? When a righteous person turns away from his righteousness and does injustice, he shall die for it. For the injustice that he has done, he shall die. Again, when a wicked person turns away from the wickedness he has committed and does what is just and right, he shall save his life. Because he considered and turned away from all the transgressions that he had committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, the way of the Lord is not just. O house of Israel, are my ways not just? Is not your ways that are not just? Therefore, I will judge you, 
O house of Israel, every one according to his ways declares the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions, lest iniquity be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed, and make yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, declares the Lord of God. So turn and live. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second lesson this morning is from Philippians 2, 1 through 18. So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interest, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Jesus, in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God to a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and found, being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now, not only in, as in my presence, but much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Do all things without grumbling or disputing, that you may be blameless and innocent children of God, without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast to the word of life, so that in the day of Christ, I may be proud that I did not run in vain or labor in vain, even if I am to be poured out as a drink offering upon the sacrificial offering of your faith. I am glad and rejoice with you all. Likewise, you also should be glad and rejoice with me. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. 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 We rise for the hallelujah. <laughs> By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? Jesus answered them, I also will ask you one question, and if you tell me the answer, then I also will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, from where did it come? From heaven or from man? And they discussed it among themselves, saying, if we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? And if we say from man, we are afraid of the crowd, for they all hold that John was a prophet. And so they answered Jesus, we do not know. And Jesus said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ.
peace, they're yours in Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 From the second lesson for today, uh, St. Paul's letter to the Philippians from chapter 12. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you. The word of the Lord. Please be seated. <clears throat> so how many of you um, have ever said anything like that people looked at you and, and they said, what What did you just say? <laughs> oh, okay, so the, the sailor is laughing in the first row here. Uh, okay, we won't, we won't pry into any of that, okay? But we, we've all done that sometimes. Maybe I think those of us who are parents um, have done them a lot. Surely kids, you've done it as well. Libby, I'm sure you've done this too. Or somebody will say to you, maybe you said something out of character, and they'll say, did you just say that? You know, I know with with our kids, um, I can remember going to uh, Bush Gardens, um, and you know my kids were um, they were at that stage that they were obsessed with everything about the Bush Gardens. They wanted to go on all the rides, but they also wanted to go to all the uh, little stores. Sarah, especially my little uh, you know shopaholic, uh, who by the way had her birthday yesterday it was Sarah's birthday. Happy birthday, Sarah, if you're watching. Um, and, and she um, used to love to stop in all the stores. And I would always say, well, no, no, we're, we're not going to do that. Oh, please, oh, please, oh, please. And then I would say what became a code word. And I'm sure you parents know this kind of thing. Please, Daddy, can, I, can we do it? And I would say something like, we'll see. <laughs> and our older kids knew it. Matthew, James, they knew that if we'll see meant it's ain't never going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> so they wanted to go to Fest House. You know where Fest House is? It's a great place. And Fest House, you know, uh, to this day, I still remember with great fondness and sheer delight their chocolate cake. It's about a 27 layer cake. It's <laughs> easily it's this big, okay? And I, it was the same thing. Don't ask me. Money was tight, you know, and I said, we'll, we'll see. So we go, to the, we go by the Fest House. And I remember Sarah asking, can we, can we go into the Fest House and get some of that cake? And I said, yeah, let's do that. And I remember my oldest, Matthew, was like, what? <laughs> he, he couldn't understand how I had caved in to this little child. You know, how, how did you do that? This is the same Matthew who, when Peter got his first cell phone, called up indignantly, and he, and he because Peter uh, called everybody like within the first 15 minutes of having his phone, and it was Matthew, James, and Sarah. I'm like, I got a phone, I got a phone. And each of them called us back within 20 minutes, okay? And Matthew especially was like, I can't believe you got him a phone. You never got me a phone. And I said, well, you know, we didn't have phones. <laughs> when you were at his age, when we were in fifth grade. And, and we got it for Peter. It was, it was part of a, he was part of a congressional a camp that he went to, the selected for uh, some kids in York County, and so that was part of their um, their safety plan was to have a phone, so in case you got lost in D.C., they'd be able to track you where you are. Okay, so some things are out of character when we say things, and and I get somewhat that impression when I read this particular section of Philippians. I get this like I'm wondering what Paul was thinking when he wrote the words that he wrote. I mean, the, the words are awesome. Last week we talked about, uh, you know, Paul's thrust in the first chapter is, for me to live is Christ, and to die is gain, right? Uh, something that's very, it's a, it's a weird way of thinking of life, but that's precisely what we're called to do as followers of Jesus. We're, we're, we're called to think differently about life. Uh, life isn't just all that we see. Life is much more than that. And life is much more full than we can even imagine when we follow Jesus, when we live in his grace and his mercy, when we recognize that. And it changes us. It, it tweaks us. It, it sometimes just makes us brand new. Because sometimes, because of our sinfulness, we need to be brand new. Right? Thank the Lord that his mercies are new every morning. Right? Because we need them every morning. Every day, every minute of the day. And God showers us with that grace and mercy. And he tells us we don't have to fear about that. You know? 
But then, so then you get these wonderful words. He talks about a couple of things at the beginning. But the part, verse 12, is interesting. Because then he says, therefore, my beloved, um, as you have always obeyed, so now, not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence, then he makes this comment. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And I have to think that those people who had heard Paul's other writings, uh, maybe, the, maybe the stuff that he wrote in, 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 in Rome would get. I'm sure the early church, as the first century and the second century went on, as they were exposed to Paul's writing, you know, isn't this the same guy? Paul said this? Because isn't he the same guy who said in the book of Romans, for we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law? Isn't this the same Paul? Uh, that says in Galatians, for all who rely on works of the law are under a curse. <clears throat> and likewise in Ephesians, one that you all know, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing. It is a gift of God, not as a result of works. So it just doesn't compute that Paul would tell the people of Philippi work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And sometimes, I think, I think our sinful nature likes to hang on to that part of that scripture verse. Right? Because we like the idea of working things out ourselves. Right? We like the idea that I want to be sure, therefore, if I do something, I can be sure. But it's not that way in life. It's not that way in life's journey. Because we're incapable of doing anything well in the Lord's sight. We always fall short of what God expects. The bar is set really high for us. Right? And, uh, you know, I, I don't murder people. But I do sometimes get angry with them and maybe say bad things. Scripture says that's like murder. You know? Um, even gossip. Even all of those things that divide us, uh, we all, all of us, at one time or another, fall into that trap and are deceived by the evil one and follow the ways of the world rather than following Jesus, who gives us life, who gives us his mercy and love, who died on the cross for us that we might live. We still get roped into that. So when we see this, you know, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, immediately the thought is, oh, okay, I have to do stuff. But that's really not what it's saying. So kind of putting it into context with the beginning of that chapter, take a look at it with me. Philippians chapter 2. So Paul says, Paul who's in prison, he says, So if there's any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy, he says, by being of the <coughs> same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing, he says, from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourself. So he's talking about two things. He's saying you as God's people, as followers of Christ Jesus, unity is important, that we're of the same mind, that we're of the same heart and love, that we're of the same purpose as we move through this life as Christ's followers. And humility needs to be a hallmark of who we are, to humble ourselves as Jesus humbled himself. And that next part talks about that. Let each one of you look not only to his own interests, but to the interests of others. Is that hard to do sometimes? If we're honest, it is. I mean, I was taught to do this. I grew up in, in Queens. Look out for number one, right? You gotta look out for number one. That's what the world teaches us, right? And that's not what Jesus teaches us. He says, look out for the other person first. Look out for the needs of others. That's important. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you, right? Um, we, we, that's a hallmark of being a Christ follower. And then it says, have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. And then he goes out and he paints this beautiful picture and reminds the readers of Philippi, and he tells us too, of how Jesus showed us the way. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God 
a thing to be grasped. On his earthly ministry, it wasn't his godliness. It wasn't the fact that he was God in the flesh. It wasn't the fact that he was God present with them. That wasn't the most important thing he preached and taught during his earthly ministry. It was loving your neighbor. It was loving those people who were around you. It was being a servant because he came as a servant, right? Though he was from God, he did not count equality with God as a thing to be grasped, but he envied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death even death on a cross. That obedience was at the will of his Father because God loves you so much that he sent Jesus into the world that even though you were, you were full of sin, even though we continually sin, Christ died for you to remove the pain of that sin, to remove, remove the eternal effects of that sin, those our sin that Jesus became embodied died on the cross for you and me, that we might live eternally, that we might have life, that our life might be changed, that we might be born new. And so now as Christ followers, understanding that, that that's part of what we do as Christ followers. We're people who also show people how to be in unity and how to be humble and how to serve, how to love. In, in ways that are amazing. Therefore God has highly exalted him, Jesus, and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus is the central person in the entire universe and certainly in our lives. And so Paul is telling the people at Philippi, he's telling us, we need to be different. It, it's not all about us. It's about Jesus, the Christ, who's in us, who lives in us, who works through us. And with that context in mind, then when you hear him say, therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now, not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling and then verse 13 is closely associated with it for it is God who works in you it is God who works in you in the Greek it is it is uh, for God is the one working in you he is the one who works salvation in us he is the one who in whom we live and move and have our being. He is the one who empowers us, who lifts us up, who encourages us, who helps us to love as we go through life. It's not about working out our salvation. We are saved by God's grace through faith in Christ Jesus. But that working out of our salvation, maybe more accurately as translated, our living our life of salvation. Because right now, as we sit here today, as wonderful and as despicable as we all are, we are, we're sinners, but we're also saints. Our future is secure in Christ Jesus because of the blood of Jesus, because he died for you and for me. Because his death conquered sin and death, and we live now in new life. <coughs> and so that changes us. And the next part of the scripture really kind of points to that a little bit more. It says, work out your own salvation. In other words, live out your own salvation with fear and trembling, with great honor and humility before God, who is Lord of all, who is the Christ, who is Lord of all heaven and earth. For it is God who works in you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. And then it says in verse 14, do all things without grumbling or disputing, that you may be blameless and innocent children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation. No, he's not talking just about the 21st century. He's talking about, this was about 55 AD. And you know what? He could have been talking about 400 BC, or he could have been talking about the time of Moses. He could have been talking about the time of Adam and Eve when sin came into the world. Twisted 
and corrupt generation. That's the world in which we live, right? And so he says, among whom you shine as lights in the world. That's the key. That's our purpose. That's who we are. We're called for this time and this place in the craziness of this world to shine as lights for Christ Jesus, to bring his light to bear to the world around us, to show people there is hope, there is life in Christ. So that's living out our salvation living out that which we have received by faith, that which our faith has grasped and clung to. And then he goes on, and it says that we do these things holding fast to the word of life, that word that does not change. So then they have Christ, I may be proud that I did not run in vain or labor in vain, Paul says, you know. I'm counting on you guys, he says. I'm counting on you you know, to be the people of God as you move through life's journey. And so that's who we are. As we live in faith, we see through a glass darkly, yes, but we have the light of Christ who brightens the day, illuminates life for us. If there's one thing that you should be sure of in this life's journey is that when you close your eyes in death, you're going to open them again to new life. Why? Not because of your works. Not because you're working out your salvation, but because you're living. You have received by faith that which has been given to you freely as a gift from God who loves you. So live in that. Be emboldened by that. Be confident in that. Be encouraged in that as you bring the light of Christ Jesus to the world around you. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for loving us. We thank you, Lord, through the words of Paul. We, we see your words. We see your very heart for us. We see, Lord, your design for us, that we would live as your people, that we would be changed from the inside to the outside, and that your life would flow through us as we bring the light of your Son, Jesus, to the world around us, as we share his love, as we uh, proclaim his the hope we have in him. Father, uh, give us all that we need uh, to be different in this world, uh, to be not conformed to it, but to be your light in the midst of darkness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 As God's people of faith, we rise <coughs> and we speak with boldness and with confidence the words of the Apostles' Creed, a statement of our faith brought down through the ages page 5. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we sing the next song.
we come before the Lord in prayer today, we have a number of people to remember in prayer. Um, uh, just a, a couple of them I, I list to you. Uh, we continue to remember Ray Reed in prayer. As you know, Ray had uh, some surgery um, this past week. We prayed for him last week here as well. Uh, the surgery was on his, his hand, but because of, um, you know, uh, the fact that he's had two transplants, his immune system is always kind of tender. And uh, so he developed gout um, as well. Uh, but as Darlene said, he said, you know, he likes to have fun in the hospital. And so this is his way of having fun, coming home with gout, okay? And so she goes, I'm not sure, she said, I'm not sure if I like his sense of humor, okay? And so we, we continue to remember Ray in prayer. He is back home uh, now, and so we, uh, we just keep him in prayer. Ray, if you're, if you're watching, we are praying for you right now, and you too, Darlene, as we walk alongside him. We also lift up a person that you might not know. I know there's a few of us who know him, but Bill Watkins is a, 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 a fellow who was diagnosed several years ago with Parkinson's disease, and now he has um, kind of a form of ALS. It's not ALS, but it, it acts like it. It's a very degenerative muscular disease, and um, he's been undergoing hospice care. And uh, keep him in prayer. I'm, I'm making a connection with him this week. He used to drive out uh, to our Friday morning uh, men's Bible class uh, pre-COVID for a couple of years, and and since then we haven't seen him. And he really hasn't been able to drive uh, anymore as well. And so he's part of the Williamsburg congregation. Uh, but I'm I'm going to go and visit with him and uh, uh, just keep him in prayer. It's a tough journey for him and his wife to make. Any announcements that you, any any prayer needs that you might have today? Yes, Shelley. Uh, prayer for Libby. <laughs> 17, how can that be? That's amazing. That's amazing. Only one year and I'm an adult. Um, <laughs> a rejoice. Um, Kristen King, um, his cousin's daughter, um, she had her heart transplant and mm -hmm. she's done very well and she has been able to go home. Oh, but now she needs a lot of services. Praise God for that. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Um, it's always good if, if you have uh, you know good news parts of prayer to answered prayer. This is wonderful to share that as well. Uh, sometimes we forget about that, but that's miraculous because if you think of where she was a couple of weeks ago, I'm not even sure if, if there would be a transplant, but now not only that, but she's well enough to even come home. What a blessing that is. Thank you, Jesus, for that. So let's rise for prayer. <coughs> Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, for giving us new life. We thank you, Lord, that as we go through life, we live um, a life that reflects our salvation in you, and that all the works that you give us to do, Lord, all the things that you give us to do in life have to do with serving and loving others and loving you. And so help us, Lord, as we live our life, um, that we would shine the light of your Son, Jesus, that you would empower us, Lord, uh, in, in everything that we do. Uh, Lord, encourage us by your Holy Spirit as we live in this broken world, uh, that we might be built up in Christ Jesus, that we might have our hope in Christ Jesus, that we might show that to the world as we reflect your light. Lord Jesus, who died and rose for us, that we might have this new life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Friend. Lord, as followers of Jesus, shape us by your love. Help us to live in his love. He shows us, Lord, how to love as we live. So may the Holy Spirit lead us and make us to be of one mind and will, that we might serve you in all of life's journey with joy and gladness, sharing your abundant life and love with our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Father, we lift up our just those who are in elected leadership and those who govern us. We lift up our president, our governor, our county administrator, and all who hold elected office. Defend, Lord, liberty, and, and give us life in the midst of this world. And Father, we pray that through your elected leaders that you would bless them and give us honest and faithful leaders that our nation may live um, in the midst of truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, uh, for those who serve in law enforcement, 
in all of our communities throughout our land. Father, we pray especially for those who were in New Kent. We lift up Sheriff Joe. We lift up Deputy Keith and all who serve in the New Kent Department. We lift up those who serve in departments in James City, in Charles City, in West Point, in Richmond, and all across this land. Keep them safe as they serve. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we lift up those who serve in law enforcement in the justice side, that you would meet with judges and clerks and lawyers and, and legal teams. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Prayer. We lift up first responders, EMS workers, dispatchers, Lord, uh, firefighters, all who work so hard to keep us uh, well and safe. And we lift up doctors and nurses and medical teams. All of these people, Lord, who have gifted in our community to help us to live a life and to serve others. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we lift up the men and women who serve in the military. And Especially, Lord, we lift up those who are who are actively deployed, and we lift up uh, Dylan to you, and we lift up families, Lord, who have been separated uh, because of service, and be with them, Lord, um, as they cope, help them to find their strength and their hope in you, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we lift up those who we love, our family and our friends, and all who are in need of prayer today. Hear their names now as we lift them. Father, all these people, we lift up to you, that you would meet with them, that you would bring healing to them in Jesus' name, that you would give encouragement to them, that you would lift them up out of depression, that for those who are mourning, Lord, that you would bring comfort to them through your word and the arms of your people. For those who were lost, Lord, we pray that uh, they would be found in you. Circle them with your love. Meet everyone, Lord, at their greatest need. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, you have blessed us um, with everything that we need in this life. And help us as we move forward in faith, as we live our lives in thanksgiving to you, as we share the light of your son Jesus through our lives, as we work the works that you've given us to do now that we're saved by grace. Um, that you would shape us, Lord, to be your people. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our God, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We gather around this meal to be able to be nourished and fed as we move from day to day uh, with the assurance of your presence, the Lord's presence with us. <coughs> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good right <coughs> down here for that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, holy God, merciful Father. In your righteous judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all of their children from the tree of life. And yet, in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and made <coughs> his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessing of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in him. <coughs> we come before you now, Lord, with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven. We laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son of the highest, blessed 
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus strengthen you and keep you in the true faith until life of the last. Amen. Amen. We rise. Before we do our prayer of sending, um, just uh, Ruth, uh, I mean, uh, Jolene, rather, your, your mom, how is she doing, by the way? Better. Better. That's good. We've been keeping you guys in prayer as we've been going through that journey. Her in prayer as she's continuing. Um, we continue with the prayer of thanks on page seven. Lord Jesus, your true presence has come to each of us in the word and sacrament, and we give you thanks and praise. We pray that we might go out into the world as your people, your church, proclaiming your love. Strengthen us as your people, people connected to you by your spirit, spirit, that we may grow in faith and love to share the good news of Jesus. As we live in him. Amen. Amen. God's people we proclaim. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power and work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing of the Lord for you today. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you forever. Amen. 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 We sing, uh, crown him with many crowns. The two verses that are written for us. <laughs> Two people he who are did believe me when I said he was coming. And so we, he, he really did? Yeah, he did believe me. <laughs> I, I listened to Virginia. I will never do that again. <laughs> <laughs> and we have to sing happy birthday to the 17-year-old Libby. Uh, Amazing. Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you.